great. All righty. All right, guys, let's come together. Let's get started. Um, OK, so today we're going to spend 50 minutes doing midterm review. OK, um, I'll cover a little bit of the logistics at the beginning, and then I'll open it up in case folks want to focus on particular questions. If not, the plan is I'm going to go through the practice midterm in reverse order. Um, and we'll get as far as we get, OK? I had a midterm review session yesterday. Uh, I'll be in my office today. I think I have a meeting after this for 30 minutes, but I'll be in my office like probably till like four or five. So if you can manage to get into Eric and you want to ask more questions, feel free to come. And then I'll do another uh, review session tomorrow from 3.30 to 5.30 in the student center, just like I did on Tuesday. So if you want to come again, and, and again, mostly for the review sessions, if you're not coming, you're not necessarily missing too. I don't know. I'm answering questions students are asking, and then I am uh, going over the practice midterm and explaining the solutions and covering extra topics and maybe giving a few hints here and there as to like things that you don't really need to know for the actual midterm. OK. Uh, all right, so a couple of logistics for the midterm on Friday. Again, what's covered, we're going to be covering everything from lecture 0 to lecture 18. Uh, this lecture, 13 and 14, I remember 14, we actually forgot to record. Uh, so there's not going to be too, there's going to be very little stuff on those lectures in the midterm. OK. So those should probably be your lowest priority ones in terms of like studying, uh, which is the ones covering hashing. They're also my least favorite topic, so I mean, that makes sense. We're also gonna be covering material from homework zero to homework five. A couple of really good problems to look at there would be the, uh, I think the index match problem that was divide and conquer. I think it was on homework three. Um, that's a good problem to like kind of really understand uh, just to, yeah, like you won't see there. There will be no duplicates from problems in your homework or quizzes on the midterm, or even from your sample midterm. There are no uh, duplicates, but they will be covering similar material. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, all solutions should be available for homework zero to five. Post them on Blackboard because I want people to. It requires you to log in to access it. I guess mainly. Uh, we will also be covering material from quiz zero to quiz six. All the quizzes are reopened. You can resubmit if you want. And also the, the, I think once you submit, it also tells you what the correct answers are for all the quizzes. Um, so again, this is like material you can use to try to study or practice. Uh, but at the end of the day, the exam itself, the midterm is going to be applied. So there, there is no, uh, duplication between anything anything we've covered in lecture. Um, there may be questions about it, like what is a graph, for example, for certain topics. But none of the homework problems are on the midterm. None of the quiz questions are on the midterm, but they are covering similar material. OK. Uh, here are the topics that we're going to be covering. Uh, we are going to be reviewing big O and asymptotics. There may be like three to four questions on this, OK? Like how to simplify big O. Uh, how to compare complexity classes. Uh, we are going to have a few questions on sorting, conceptual questions, like what's the fastest you can possibly sort if you're doing comparison-based sorting, right? Um, and also for sorting, you really need to be comfortable with like the divide and conquer idea. So there's going to be a few questions that are going to be asking you to design algorithms, and the, the best solution is going to be a divide and conquer one, OK? So you want to be a little bit, again, you will not have seen this question before, but you want to be a little bit comfortable with like, how does divide and conquer work? We did a lot of examples in class. So we did merge sort, we did quick select, all of those algorithms were divide and conquer. Okay. I'm sorry about that video over there. Let's hopefully nobody has like get seizures or anything. So ignore that. Um, there is going to be a good chunk of the exam that actually covers trees and binary search, not because we covered them a lot in class, but because they are really good data structures to test recursion. So there's going to be a, a couple of questions that are definitely going to be looking like how comfortable are you with writing recursive algorithms? And again, we have practiced this throughout lecture, right? DFS was recursive. Um, I think the, the DFS was not, but, you know, merge sort, text 
So like a lot of the algorithms we've covered, we've presented them in a recursive fashion. Um, so, and that, that's the last, the last big topic I would say is recursion, actually not true. The last big topic is gonna be graphs. This is the stuff we covered most recently. So, you know, if I ask you to run DFS on a graph or breast first search on a graph, you should maybe be a little bit familiar with how that would work. Um, and, you know, you should know what an acyclic graph is, what a directed graph is, weighted graph, that sort of stuff. Cool. Um, any questions on the material that's covered? So, yeah. When you say, like, are we going to have to, like, write code with, like, on the paper? So you will be, uh, there are a few questions where you will be asked to write pseudocode for your algorithm. So I will not be asking you to write C++. So you can write C++, you can write Python. Uh, the syntax itself is not going to matter. It is going to be more, you know, can you be, can you precisely describe what your algorithm should be doing in some language, like not a programming language, but like, I might even accept like English sentences as long as they're like precise enough where it's like you are covering like the different steps that you need, right? Um, so again, if you're not comfortable with a particular syntax or with C++, like you are not, like I would not get stuck on that on the midterm. I would just be like, write it out in English or just say what you're trying to do. And then, and you might get, you'll probably get partial credit at minimum. Uh, you might get the full credit actually, if it's, if it is the right algorithm. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so the format, um, so it's gonna be in class in person, it's gonna be 50 minutes. So it is gonna take up, I guess, like your entire lecture time. Um, please bring a pencil. I'll try to bring some extra ones. I'm still trying to figure out how to print out 70 exams, but should be, I'll, I'll figure that out. So they'll probably be here, stacked up here. Come in, just grab it. As soon as you come in, you are more than welcome to get started. And yeah, so you can start uh, whenever you come in, well, I won't let you start before 12, I guess, just to keep it fair. But whenever you come in, that's when you can start. And then um, at 1250, I'll probably really strongly encourage you to like put it down. Um, and then, yeah. Cool. The exam itself, so as currently designed, and this might change a little bit, but as currently designed, it is 29 questions worth 80 points total. Okay. Uh, there are multiple choice questions. There are also true-false questions. And then there are pseudocode questions. These are basically the three different types of questions, okay? The majority of the questions, um, oh, actually I missed one type. Yeah, there's also short answer questions. By short answer, I said like you have to write, I might say like, what is the running time of this algorithm? And you have to write it, right? It's not multiple choice, select one of these answers. It's like you write O of N cubed, right? Um, most of the questions are actually the multiple choice, the true, false. Uh, and the short answer, but uh, half of the points are from the pseudocode ish. So basically, there's a lot of like small point questions that are more like the quizzes, where I'm just asking you like, what is this? What is that? And that covers around half of the exam. So if you're doing really well in the quizzes, you will at least you should crush the like 20, 25 of the questions and just be fine. And then the remaining four questions are worth more points, I think 10 each. Um, and they're more like, here's a problem, design an algorithm for it. And to get full credit, you have to design the most optimal algorithm, which I will, I'll give you like, oh, the running time should be log n or like n to get full credit, but you will get partial credit for any attempt. So you should always try it. Um, like I mentioned, it's a mixture of concepts and interview practice is what I would say. So. Yeah, the concept question is around 40 points, around half of the exam. And this is very similar to the quizzes. This is the majority of the questions. Um, for example, run DFS on this graph. Um, can you sort that H should not be there? Can you sort faster than n log n? Like true, false, I can sort faster than n log n, right? Um, and then there will be interview practice, which are the remaining 40 points, which is going to be like, you know, design an algorithm to do X give me a short justification why it's right and tell me how fast it is, right? Um, write the pseudocode for this algorithm. So these might be the more challenging ones, but these are going, these are modeled after some of the homework assignments. So if you're feeling really comfortable with the homework assignments, I think you should be pretty comfortable with these. 
And again, for these, they are worth 40 points, but it's not a, you got it wrong. You got it right. You know, it's like, it's not like from zero to 10. It's like, you know, if you wrote something that is like close to the answer, then you'll get partial credit. If you write, you know, if you write the full perfect solution, let's say the question is worth 10 points, you'll get 10 points. If you write a solution that's correct and makes sense and it works, but it's not the fastest, then, you know, you get eight points or something, right? If you write something that like is incorrect, but like has the right idea, then you get like, you know, five points, right? Or whatever, right? So you do always want to write something for these, but they're more open, open-ended. Any questions on the format so far? Cool. Yeah, and then like I said, you should not expect to see any duplicates of any of the questions you've seen, but they will be covering very, very, very similar topics, right? So in the practice exam, I might've said like, run BFS on this. There might be a question on the midterm that says run DFS on this graph, right? So not the same, but similar. Cool, now last question, is it difficult? Um, maybe, so actually I changed my mind. I tried to make it reasonable, but I really know this stuff. I did have Chi take the midterm as well, but she also really knows her stuff. So it's a little hard to gauge how hard it's going to be or not. Um, but I did try to make it like easy for me and like easy for Chi, like really e like for us, it's easy. I think she got like a near perfect score when she took it. Right. So, you know, it's not like we were like, oh, let me design it so that it's hard for me or something. Right. Um, but, uh, I don't, I, I don't know. Right. So, uh, it, it might be a little too long. So just keep in mind that you may not finish within the 50 minutes allotted for the exam. That's actually okay. Don't like, don't stress out if you don't finish. Also, I'm just letting you this know ahead of time because not all the questions are equal difficulty, right? So if you're getting stuck on a question, this is just like test taking strategy, like try it for 30 seconds. If you can't make any progress, just move on to the next one, right? Like, right, move on to the next one, get all the ones you can do that you kind of know the answers to, and then come back to the ones you couldn't do and then always write something. Because a lot of times, right, even when I ask you guys in lecture, a lot of the answers you guys are giving, even if they're wrong in the big scheme of things, you are making progress towards the right answer. So you do always wanna like, you wanna be writing, you know, whatever you're thinking, you should probably write that down because you are probably understanding something, right? Cool. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's okay if you struggle with the exam slash the material, this class is hard, this is class known as like the hardest computer science class that you'll normally take. So I have been trying to like, and again, like I did not sacrifice difficulty and material, but I am trying to make it flexible for you guys, right? Uh, again, guess at an answer, even if it's not right, you will probably get partial credit. If you write nothing, it's very hard for us to give you partial credit. If you write something, then it's like, you know, benefit of the doubt, they were probably along the right route. Let's give them some credit, okay? Uh, if that sounds stressful, don't worry. If you work hard and do your best, you'll probably not fail. Um, that's my hope. If it ends up being that I designed the exam where it was too difficult, then what we'll do is we will curve it, right? Um, and I want the vast majority of you guys to pass the class. So that's my goal, right? So it might be hard, but don't stress out about it. Uh, and as suggested by a couple of folks as I was talking yesterday, I will be offering midterm corrections. So again, if you do really poorly, uh, I haven't finalized the policy, but let's see. Uh, Trinity is asking, yeah, I'm about to get to that, Trinity. Great question. But um, I will try to offer midterm corrections uh, after we grade the midterm. So it'll probably be, you can get up to half of the credit back or something. I'll figure out exactly the policy, but. Again, if most of the class does well, then there's no point in offering midterm corrections. If most of you are doing poorly, then of course I'll offer it to every, you know, it's open to everyone and we'll fix it, right? Um, and then the other thing is I will allow a half page front and back cheat sheet uh, if you wanna bring it. I, I don't think it'll help you because the, the, the midterm is designed such that uh, well, it might help. I, I don't know. I'm not sure if it'll help or not, but you are more than welcome to bring like half a page front and back uh, with anything you want on it to the exam. Does that, is that clear? Yeah. Uh, and hopefully, uh, 
Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, to be honest with you guys, I'm like, I'm probably not going to be checking everybody that's walking in. I'd rather you take the midterm, but I do like, I'll walk around and if I see you with like, you know, a binder of stuff or like your laptop open, I might be like, okay, that's a little weird. Right. But if, you know, if, if you, if you have one sheet, you know, one full sheet, I might come by and just check the back to make sure it's not, doesn't have anything on it, but half a page front and back is good enough. Um, cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. So then review sessions. So I had a review session yesterday. Again, most of these sessions, I'm just going over the practice midterm. So it's not like you're usually not getting a lot of extra information. We're just going over the practice midterm. Um, uh, this is not really a review session, but I'll be an Eric today. So just come by if you have questions or if you want to talk about different problems and then on Thursday, I will do a similar review session to Tuesday because some of the folks on Tuesday couldn't make it. So again, it'll be 3.30 to 5.30 in the Student Center. 313, I believe, is the room. Uh, and then on Friday, it's our midterm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, just come by. I think I have a meeting like 1.30 to 2. So I might be unavailable for those thir like 30, 20 minutes. I'll try to cut it short. Um, but then I'll just either be in my office or I'll be hanging out in the third floor um, with Chi. And, and she'll be there from 1 to 2 today, right? So she'll be there as well. So yeah, you guys can come and like study together or just come and ask a question. Uh, ideally about the midterm stuff that we can all share with each other. Yeah. Cool. Uh, any questions on that? Yeah, any questions? So everybody knows how the midterm is going to work. You guys have been studying for it, I assume. Yeah, question. Uh, Eric, what? Uh, 331 is my office. Eric 331, yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't write it here. Good good question. 331 is my, I'm on the third floor. If you walk around, that's where all your CS uh, professors are on the third floor in Eric. Uh, you should. My door does not have my name, but it says engineering residence and it's like in one of the corners. Yeah. Any other questions? Have you guys taken a look at the practice midterm? Yes. Uh, what was the, what's the consensus on the practice midterm? For the folks that have taken a look at it, this is like hard, kind of a middle, middle of the ground. So I, I see some middles. It's okay to say it's hard. It only make me make the midterm easier. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. So uh, let's go over some material. And again, like this lecture is not really like, I didn't know what you guys needed me to review. So I think the first thing I wanna start with is, are there any particular questions or topics you want me to review? If not, I will start going over the practice midterm in reverse order. Um, yeah, Jonathan? Uh, yeah, sure. So let's see. Well, actually, that's not good. Let me see if I can dig up some that we covered in lecture. Okay. So here's a few. Actually, let me look at the homework. I think this is going to be the most helpful for your divide and conquer stuff. Um, I believe this one. Ah, okay. Yes. So, um, this is a good question to kind of like understand again. So you will not see the same question in the midterm, but there may be a similar question to this. So this is from your homework assignment, homework three, and it talks about finding the matching elements. Okay. Do you guys remember this question a little bit? Maybe. So you may see a question like this, where it tells you, you are given a sorted array and it's not, it's not gonna be binary search. It's not gonna be like find this element, right? But again, you could argue that this, this question is a modification of binary search in a sense, where it tells you, um, I wanna find the element A, 
such that i, that its index is equal to the element, okay? And you know that the vector is sorted, okay? So for the midterm itself, well, uh, what, what is one possible solution here? Uh, sure, Serena, you want to try it? Yeah. Right. So what would, oh, that turned off. That's helpful. Well, that didn't turn off. How do I turn off one of them, but not the other one? Um, yeah, I'm not sure how to do it. Interesting. Well, I guess we can, we can write it here, right? There's a little bit of white space right there. Okay. So if you are given a similar question on your midterm, you might be asked to write some pseudocode for it. So to write the pseudocode, you might say something like, you know, find matching. And then the first thing you do is you define your input. So you say, you know, a sorted vector A. And then you tell me what is your output. Your output is, I forget what this question asks, but let's say true if ai equals i in a, right? So you might not get full credit for cutting up the brute force, but what does the brute force solution look like? How am I, what's the pseudocode for that kind of look like? Right, so I'm trying to figure out if there's an element in A such that its index is equal to the element. Yeah, so for let's say I equals zero to, you know, let's say length of A. And again, I would say uh, for the midterm, again, you, you wanna try to prioritize the things that are important, which is providing a logical solution to the problem. So I wouldn't like, if you don't immediately think like, do I need a minus one? Do I not need a minus one? I would say, don't worry about it. Leave it as is. You probably won't lose too many points if it's off by a little bit, right? So here we might say this. So I have from I equals zero to length of A. Uh, what do I do? So I say, okay, if I is equal, equal to the value on a then i return true otherwise once i'm done with the for loop i return false okay so this might be an example of a solution you can give for this question on the midterm right so hopefully this didn't take you guys more than i don't know 30 seconds a minute to like think about it and then write it down right uh, now this wouldn't give you full credit because, so the midterm for these questions, the harder ones are gonna be, give me the pseudocode, um, explain why it's right, which, why is this, why does this work? Like, yeah, you, you literally like go through the whole list and you check everything to see if it's equal to the index, right? And as soon as you find it, you return. So it's like pretty obvious that it's right. So like, I wouldn't spend too much time for this algorithm to like explain why it's right. Uh, and then what's the running time? That would be the other thing you want to figure out. O of n, right? Okay, so you would say, this is my pseudocode, and then you would just write running time is O of n, and you would be, okay, I'm done. This solution would probably be worth, you know, eight points or, yeah, probably eight, seven points out of the 10 possible, right? So again, hopefully that's not like difficult for you. Now, the thing is, um, in the problem, in the in the midterm, I would have said, Give me, uh, for full credit, give me a solution that is O of log n. That's what I would say in the midterm. Because there is a solution to this problem that has running time O of log n. Okay. Now, this would be the one that maybe if you can't think of it within 30 seconds or a minute, you write this solution, you move on to another problem. Because you've already got most of the points, right? Uh, and then if you have time at the end, you come back to it and you're like, hey, what if... What is something I might be able to do here so that I can get a log n solution? Binary search. Okay. Binary search pops to mind, a little similar to that. Okay. So here, so again, like this is why the exam can be a little difficult and it kind of depends how comfortable you are, right? 
a couple of things. Like I said, the array is sorted to begin with, right? So here, we didn't take advantage of the fact that A is sorted, right? This could actually work for any array, right? But I do know the problem tells me that A1 is less than A2 is less than, you know, A n minus one is less than A n or whatever, right? So they're all strictly sorted in some way. Um, now, if you think of a few examples of sorted arrays where the index matches, right? Uh, it actually like, yeah, let, let's, you might try like a few examples of some arrays, right? You might say like, let's say this is, you know, five, eight, 10, okay? That's sorted, okay? But the index doesn't match any of the elements, right? So the answer is false, right? So then you're like, well, what would it look like if the index matches, right? So you say, well, the easiest index to match would be the first one, right? So the index is zero. So that means my first element has to be zero. So if I have zero, you know, 12, 14, this should return true because zero matches its index, right? And then you're like, well, that's easy. You know, if it's the first element, if it's zero, I can maybe check that. That's like constant time, it's pretty fast. What if I try an example where the matching index is somewhere else in the array? So not the beginning, right? So let's say I make an array, I'm gonna have, you know, four elements and I say, well, I want this one to be the matching index. What does this number have to be then? Has to be two, right? So two has to be here, but this has to be smaller than two. And this has to be smaller than whatever this is, right? So I don't want these to match the index. So I might say, well, this has to be, let's say zero and negative four, right? And then this is, has to be bigger, but I don't want it to be three because three matches the index. So let's say it's four, okay? So here's an example where the only matching index is kind of in the middle, it's two. Um, but what, what do you notice about these elements and these elements, right? So here the indices are zero, one, two, three. And then thinking, so you, you want a running time to be log n, so you're thinking binary search, right? Yeah, so you can say like, hey, if I want the runtime to be log n, that means I need to split my array into pieces somehow. You know, what I might try splitting it into halves. See if that helped me. How would that help me, right? So if you look at this one, let's add another number here. Let's say seven, right? Just to make it five. You might say, well, let's look at the middle element of my array. Oh, well, there's one case where it actually just matches up. Okay, so that's actually okay. So you might start thinking like, well, look at middle. That's like step one. If you get lucky and you know the middle, you know, equals the index of middle, right? Then you're you're done, right? So let's say, well, I have this example where it matches. All right, let's change it. Let's say the middle here, like this one is gonna be three now, and this is the one that's gonna be one because this is the one that matches. Okay. So I moved it outside the middle. So now I look at the middle and it does not match the index because the index is two. But I know it's three and I know the index should be two. Does that tell me anything about what numbers are gonna match? Does that tell me everything about where my matching value is going to be? Yeah. It's gonna be on the left. Why is it gonna be on the left? Right, because this number is three and it already didn't match two. So it's already bigger. Like I noticed it was bigger than two, but all of these numbers have to be strictly bigger. So the best case scenario is this is four, this is five, this is six, this is seven, right? That's the best case scenario because they're all different numbers, right? As per my problem statement. But the indexes cannot catch up, right? In a sense, like there's no way you can match it because this index also increases at most by one. So you're already like, oh, I cannot catch up to this side. Therefore, if I compare these numbers, right, if my middle 
is greater than my index of middle or whatever, right? Then you know the answer. If the answer exists, it's on this side, right? So again, divide and conquer. I'll just call myself whatever algorithm on, you know, A from zero to N divided by two. And again, off by one, like don't worry about that sort of stuff. Don't get stressed out about that. It's fine. Uh, and then you might think, well, here's the case where three was bigger than two. You know, what if this was, what if this was a one and then that makes this a zero and this is a negative four, that's fine. And then I make this a three, right? So the index is bigger than the value. Then that actually tells me, well, the answer has to be on this side, right? And essentially, that might be very close to like a full credit solution, just because, you know, again, don't worry too much about the, spe the specific details, but the main idea to be like to get a log n solution is this fact that like, if you look at the middle, that actually rules out an entire half of the array, right? So that might be nine points. So you go from seven to nine again. So like going from like, the brute force, like the really difficult is not going to be like a ton of points for you guys. But if you want to get a perfect score, you know, then that's what, yeah. Uh, so what is pseudocode? Can you get, uh, get less specific? Like for example, if you're calling an algorithm, it'd be like A of less, where does it have to be like um, that? You can be a little bit less specific. Yeah. As long as we sort of understand and you are taking like all the required steps, I, I think we're going to be fairly lenient. And really for this problem, the thing I would be looking for is like, more like when, on your justification when you say like why it works you being able to convince me that it's like oh you know because i looked at the middle and the index was smaller then there it was impossible for it to be on the left side because the indexes can decrease at most by one value but the values can also at most decrease one. so because it's already smaller they're never going to match right um because i think that's like the key insight and then the pseudocode yeah you can say like left of a or like left half of A might be a little better. Um, Cause you like left of A is a little ambiguous. So you wanna be as precise as you can, but also not be like, especially like plus one, minus one. Like I wouldn't be worried about that. You might not get full credit. If you're off by one, you'll like lose a point or like half a point, but you, yeah. It's in the big scheme of things, half a point is very little. Right? Uh, yeah, and there's probably gonna be a problem similar to this, but not the same uh, in the midterm. So I do encourage you guys to look at that dividing power problem. Um, I think there's another problem that you can solve with dividing conquer that we didn't do in class, but it is called, we can try to cover it. Is this a good one? To, uh, let me think. Well, let's see, let's move. Uh, do you want more, another example of a divide and conquer algorithm? Okay. Um, there will be multiple, there are two, I th there are more than one divide and conquer algorithms in the, in the exam. Yeah. Cool. Uh, oh, I see somebody on chat. Yeah, I can't see what's going on. Yes, I am. I am sorry for the people on Zoom. Um, I should have taken a picture of that. Nobody took a picture of what we talked about, right? Uh, it's probably in your, uh, in your like homework walkthrough. Oh, okay, yeah. So basically, we just walk. We just uh, we went over question three in the homework on Zoom. So you can. I will. Say the full solution for it is in the solutions. Let me. How do I? How do I log in to see my solutions, people? I have to log in first. Okay, log in first, and then I go look at the solutions. And yes, here are the homework three solutions. And you will see that we just covered three points. We covered this one. So this is what I was reading on the board, essentially. Actually, this is a far better version of what you guys should read and look at than what we wrote on the board. Um, yeah. Input, output, this is more detailed. If, if this is the length, if I, this, I actually covered the base case, which I didn't cover when we were talking about it over there. Um, 
So is it like the base case and stuff that will get us to like? Uh, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think the full ten is going to be pretty, pretty. Well, I don't know. If if you're very comfortable with these algorithms, you can get them, right? Like it didn't take me more than I don't know, two or three minutes to write up the solution. But again, that's because I also wrote the question, so you know. Um, uh, yes, and then there's also a little bit like I didn't cover this, but you do need like middle index plus, and then the algorithm because it gets shifted off when you go to the right side. Um, but yeah, so this would be like th this is like the full pseudocode that would be full credit essentially, and then. This justification is a little too long. Probably just something shorter would be fine. Yeah. Sorry for folks on Zoom. Yeah, I uh, I did not optimize this lecture for the Zoom folks. So, um, yeah. Any? Yeah. Let's actually let's let's start covering some topics. Let's look at the practice midterm together. Well, have most of the practice midterm. Most of it. Okay, so a good. Well, let's let's practice some more and share our insights with everybody else. So, uh, this is what I would call an example of a concept question. So most of the practice midterm are the concept questions. There are just a few of them that are like pseudocode coding ones. Um, I would look at the homework for those. But who wants to walk me through the answers to these? Got it. So this is similar to what we did in lecture with the fishes, I guess, um, but in general. So who else, like, did anybody else come up with a different answer to question 27 for how to represent the graph? No? Yeah, that's pretty good. That's good. Um, what are some properties of your graphs? That's question two. Then again, that took you, what, like 30 seconds, 15 seconds? Yeah, so you're good. 28. For the graph you defined, that we defined, which of these properties apply to it? Yeah. Undirected, uh, why? You don't have to, you don't, in the midterm, you don't have to explain, just checkbox, but why? Yeah, for every, like, if, if elephant A interacts with elephant B, it's like interaction is, is reflexive, I think is what it's called. So it's like, if you interact with B, then B interacts with A, right? So they, it's undirected in a sense, because every edge is going to have both directions. So you would argue it's undirected. Um, anything else for acyclic or weighted? Yeah, actually, like I would. So for this question twenty-eight, the answer that we have on the on the practice midterm is you define this graph where the edges are unweighted, so the the selection would be undirected, but. Uh, if you define a different graph that still helps you solve problem 29, right? If the gr other graph you defined was weighted because you decided to be like, hey, I'm going to include like the number of times they interact with each other, right? Um, as part of my edge weights, then it would be acceptable for you to select weighted in the homework here. And the way we're going to grade these types of problems is like, we're going to grade them all together. So it's not like we're going to look at just 28 and be like, hey, they marked the right thing. Yeah. So that one's pretty easy. Um, Are there solutions to the chapter two? Yes. Yes. Uh, I uploaded the solutions to the website as well. Yeah. I think below the practice questions. So these are, this is technically the solutions. Uh, let's take a look at maybe this, this question. Uh, again, these are more on the concept side. So it's not the interview practice concept side. How do you guys feel about this? So, yeah, just like terminology stuff. Again, I don't like these questions a lot. I will say there is no question on the actual midterm that asks about source and sync notes because we kind of just mentioned that in passing when we were talking about graphs. Um, but it is good for you guys to know what that means. So, what's a source node? 
Yeah. Yep. You're like, you're the source of everything. So you only have arrows going out of you. There's no arrows coming in. What's the second node? Only arrows going in because uh, you know you 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 are the sink. All the water is going into you, right? So how many source nodes in this graph? One, two, three, two, three. So again, source means that you only have arrows going out. There are no arrows going in. If you have arrows going in, you cannot be a source. <laughs> Oh, I'm hearing a lot of different answers. Uh, somebody want to, yeah, Jonathan, what's. I would accept either of those answers if you include an explanation. But uh, yeah, I think, I think F and G are the only two I would personally consider a source node. But if you're like, again, like I encourage you guys to write more, we are going to try to give partial credit and be lenient. Because again, if you say, oh, if I define a source node to be a node that has no edges, no outgoing edges, then D is also included. Then I'll be like, well, maybe you're technically wrong, but also you're pretty smart. So this is fine. Is that right. like technically two different graphs? Uh, not really. It would be two connected components of one graph, just because I say this is one graph. So you can have graphs where they're disconnected. Yeah. Uh, for one, two, three, um, are you the highest, the best time as far as, uh, oh, for these one, two, three. Yeah. Okay. So let, let's jump to this because there's a question on the midterm. So again, like you guys feel free to like, if you've looked at the midterm and something doesn't make sense, feel free to call it out and be like, can we go over this question? All right. Uh, so this is asymptotic analysis. Uh, who wants to give a try to number one? So this is one of the true false, right? So again, even if you guess 50-50, so you know, half the time you're going to get the points, but hopefully you don't have to guess here. Uh, did somebody raise their hand? Uh, yeah, do you want to try it? Yeah, true or false. So it's asking is so it is true, true. Okay. So I have somebody that says true. Does anybody disagree with true? No? Okay. Uh what you do disagree? Or you have a question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I will say this. So when you're simplifying down for big O and big omega and all of those, the thing that matters is Again, you guys should remember, we always get rid of constants because they don't matter, right? So immediately you should be like, well, I can ignore the 100 and I can ignore the 200. Those like multiplicative constants and additive constants usually don't matter. So then the only thing that you would have left would be like, oh, I think this is O of N plus log N. And then again, big O is really just trying to look at how fast the function grows. So because N grows much faster than log N, to be more precise, the limit as n goes to infinity of log n over n is zero, right? Then this log n actually kind of disappears, right? So the answer is true. You can simplify it down to n because you can ignore terms that are not that important. This is the same thing we do when we do like O of you know n squared plus 3n, right? When we did this, we said, well, this 3n doesn't really matter in the big scheme of things because as n gets big, the n squared is gonna be so much bigger, right? Like if n is a million, this n squared is like a trillion, you know? And this is like plus three million, right? Which is like, you know, a trillion plus three million is basically a trillion. Like there's no difference, right? So that's why we do also drop this. So for these types of questions, you do wanna be a little bit familiar with the hierarchy of, the functions, right? So, so yes, it is true because n is the fastest one out of these. Yeah, and uh, let's try a little bit of the hierarchy. So let's say I have n cubed, n squared, square root of n, n log n, um, 
n and n and n factorial and n to the n and three to the n. Who can put these in order of slowest to fastest? Uh, grows the most slowly to grows the fastest. Slow, uh, slowest algorithm would be n factorial because n factorial grows so fast. But yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So I got I have a log n n n log n. Okay. Uh, square root of n. Okay. Sure. Next. All right, who wants to who wants to take over from this part or or you are welcome to suggest corrections if this doesn't look right to you. So he's saying that the the slowest, so we're gonna go from like slowest growing to fastest growing. Okay. So the slowest growing is log n. And then he says the next one is n, then n log n, then square root of n. Uh, yeah, Leander, square root of n before n. Okay, so there's a correction. Somebody says that actually square root of n should go here before n. Yeah, sorry, you guys on Zoom, you can't see what's going on still, huh? Yeah, I don't know. I'll take a picture of it and try to email it. Okay, why, why, somebody want to explain why square root of n grows more slowly than n? Square root of n is going to get smaller automatically. Yeah. I think he already said it. But yeah. Just n is the same as saying n to the one. Right. And if you do square root of n, that's the same as saying n to the one. Yeah. So when you're looking at polynomials, you really want to simplify it down to what is the power, and then you can sort by power, and that's how you get the smaller ones. So like n to the one half, you know, like if I had, you know, if I had cube root of n, that would be n to the one third, and one third is smaller than one half. So this one actually. Does that grow more slowly? Yes, this one grows more slowly than square root of n. Right. Uh, but yeah, what's next? So we're up to n log n. What comes after? So we got rid of this, 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 this. n, n squared. OK, sure, n squared. What's after n squared? n cubed. OK. And then out of these, these are funny. There's a, these are fun. Which one's x fastest growing? Three to the n. Okay. Uh, I believe you're right. Yes, three to the n is the next fastest growing. Uh, actually, n to the n is the fastest here. Yeah. So actually, then it's n factorial, then it's n to the n. So. Uh, these you don't see a lot in algorithms, but we will have some algorithms where you see it. And then, um, yeah, so that is, uh, we have one more minute left. So I guess we didn't get to go through the whole practice midterm, but I do encourage you guys to go through it. You know the format of the exam. You write a cheat sheet, half page, front and back. Um, and if you have more questions, I'm going to head over to my office right after this. And I will have a review session tomorrow as well. Okay. All right, sorry folks on Zoom. Um, yeah, I I'm taking a picture of the board right now, but basically we were just going over the questions on the practice midterm or some of them, okay? So yeah, I will end the meeting now and I'll see you guys on Friday in person.